कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, Viliamenga Walker is new Sudelpa leader. Facebook commentator remanded. And life imprisonment for killing baby. From the studios of FBC Subaru, Jackie Spade. William Ngav Walker is the new leader of the Social Democratic Liberal Party. FBC News can confirm that Ngav Walker will be announced as the party leader at the annual general meeting tomorrow. Apenisa Wangarandovu reports Ngav Walker was seen being congratulated by members of the Sedelpa Management Board outside the meeting venue this afternoon. <laughs> Supporters of the new Sedelpa leader congratulating Ngav Walker ahead of the official announcement. <laughs> Mr. Amboka said that he won't be his not the leader anymore. Well, I'm not party leader now. I just, uh, the, the, the decision has already been taken. So that's it. FBC News was also reliably informed by sources within the party that while Ngavoka is set to take over as party leader, lawyer Philemon Ivosarongo is likely to be announced his new deputy. We've appointed our um, party leader and deputy party leader. It was very democratic and it showed that uh, Sodelpa is uh, actually intact and in good spirit to be able to challenge 2022. Outgoing party leader Sidiveni Rambuka says he respects the board's decision but his supporters won't take the better lying down. The people who stand with me may want to form a new party and, and continue to champion the uh, philosophies I stand with. The Sodelpa Management Board spent most of the day deliberating over the recommendations of an independent panel which interviewed applicants for the two positions and given developments this afternoon, the announcement at the annual general meeting tomorrow is a mere formality. Ngavoka is likely to address the party AGM tomorrow in his maiden speech as the new party leader. Apinisawang Radovu, FBC News. Former computer science teacher and Facebook commentator Kishore Kumar was remanded in custody by the Suva Magistrates Court today. Kumar is charged with six counts of indecently annoying a person and one count of criminal intimidation. It is alleged that between July and October, he insulted the modesty of National Federation Party MP Lenora Ngerengeretambua by posting live videos on his public Facebook page named Kishore Kumar Publication, saying that Ngerengeretambua is a poor star in Fiji. It is also alleged that he posted a live video saying that Ngerengeretambo is a porn star in Parliament. He also allegedly posted another video saying that the NFP MP is a porn lover and that's why she made a porn video. Prosecution objected to bail and defense has been told to file proper bail application with the ruling on Thursday 28-year-old former soldier Tevita Kunawave has been sentenced to life imprisonment by the Suva High Court. He was convicted of killing his four-month-old baby in Nambua Suva last year. Pranita Prakash with the details. The incident happened in Nambua when Tevita Kunawave threw a concrete block at his wife, which instead hit the child. During the sentence hearing, Kunawave sought the court's forgiveness. He also sought forgiveness from his wife for the pain and loss he has caused to the family and admitted he was abusive towards her. In his mitigation, the defense said Kunawave also feels the pain of losing his youngest daughter and will spend the rest of his life with that knowledge. In his sentencing, the High Court judge said that the primary cause of the child's death was brain injury as a result of blunt force trauma. The judge also said that Kunawave was supposed to protect his wife from harm but instead breached her trust and caused significant emotional pain. He will serve 14 years behind bars before release may be considered. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. People in informal settlements have unrealistic expectations of securing a home from the Housing Ministry. Permanent Secretary Sanjeeva Pereira says applicants fail to understand the requirements needed to attain a title, especially with limited land available. Kelly Vavella reports where land is available, there needs to be a full upgrade program, including proper utilities. There are more than 250 informal settlements in Fiji and with only 44 development leases, the housing ministry does not have enough land for everyone. 
most of these people like have this uh, uh, thinking that uh, giving a title is like you just mark four pegs and then you say this is your piece of land and then this is your title. So it, it, is, it is a bit of a lengthy process to explain to them and make them understand that you need for, for you to have a proper title, survey title, you need to go through a full upgrade program. Pereira says sometimes it's difficult to assist informal settlers with lease titles because the ministry has to negotiate with different landowners. Because in their mind they're saying, I'm living here, uh, so good that the ministry has got a development lease, so why can't we just mark it and provide us a title? And that would be the end of the matter. We will have a title, we'll, but realistically it's a little bit different. Eh? Minister for Housing Pramila Kumar says there are laws in place when it comes to such issues. But they fail to understand there is town and country planning regulations. Town and Country Planning Act one has to comply with. So The Housing Ministry is now creating a complete database which will keep track of activities and developments within informal settlements. Kelly Vathala, FBC News. Most villages in Kandabu are still reeling from the devastating impacts of Tropical Cyclone Harold that hit early this year. Narikoso villager Semi Nangelebuki says it's been seven months since the cyclone and they are still buying root crops from the Suva market. Sanyani Boiler reports. This 68-year-old village Elder is praying no other natural disaster will hit their island during this cyclone season as they are looking to harvest some of their crops. We're currently buying from Suva. We buy cassava, dalo, yams and other vegetables from there. It's really hard for us. We started with this after TC Harold, so we're just hoping there are no more cyclones this year, as most of us are looking to harvest what we planted post TC Harold in December. For the women of Narikoso, they've been struggling to buy personal hygiene products post TC Harold and also during COVID-19 lockdown. The challenge I faced was when there was no more food in our plantation due to the devastation caused by TC Harold. This is still a concern until today. We had to pay our fares to go and buy food from Suva. Our health hygiene is also at risk, especially as women. We know that uh, we are at risk. Our family, our loved ones, because of the conditions of the village post TC Herod. Women's hygiene, no proper beds, most of our clothes were blown away. It was a really tough time. The village women are relying on donations from the government and non-government organizations. They've been given sanitary pads, hand sanitizers, and other hygiene products through donations. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. Up ahead, human resource struggles amid COVID-19 and raising awareness on prostate cancer. By today, I Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Radio Fiji 2, Deshki Dharka. Social norms restrict men from coming into public spaces regarding prostate and testicular cancer. Attorney General Ayasai Kayum says there's a lot of social taboos that men need to get over as early detection always saves lives. Kritika Kumar reports. Men are being encouraged to speak freely about these life-threatening diseases. I think that uh, psychological restriction is still there with a lot of men. And I think uh, the reason why that is so is because there's still a lot of uh, issues with what I call, uh, you know, the machoism built around uh, men. Said Kayum believes family support is vital. He says there's nothing unmanly about talking about prostate and testicular cancer. It is that sort of that, that macho culture that men essentially are brought up in. Uh, there are certain uh, even taboos that you know, a, a woman, the way that they may look uh, to a man, and indeed men have a lot of insecurities about such things. Recent stats show that prostate cancer deaths have overtaken breast cancer deaths. Uh, in Fiji, coming back home, 2019 we had 41 cases of prostate cancer diagnosed throughout the country. 2020, um, three weeks ago we had 45, now we're approaching 60. Dr. Prasad says prostate cancer mostly affects men above the age of 50, 
and testicular cancer affects those between the ages of 15 and 35. Men are being urged to get tested as prostate cancer can be treated if diagnosed early. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Maintaining productivity during these unprecedented times has been a challenge for the workforce. Human resources professionals may have had the toughest job in having to deal with the workforce dynamics. From having to lay off staff to directing people to work from home, they've had to introduce new measures to combat the effects of the pandemic. Venena Rakautonga reports the Fiji Human Rights Resources Institute held an annual convention for its members today in Suva. The workplace landscape is changing quickly in response to COVID-19 and HR personnel must be proactive in handling situations. They have, they've now written policies and they have not only written policies, they've uh, rolled out those policies, they've created awareness uh, so that everyone is aware. We are hoping that those men and women who are in the workplace takes the awareness uh, programs back home. President Kameli Mbatiweti says the convention is there to help its members better understand and address the issues they face during the pandemic. Your ability during these difficult times to manage your finances, and that is something that's failing a lot here, in uh, not only in Fiji, in the Pacific Islands. Our culture is such where we are communal, pers uh, uh, communal people and we ought to share everything. FHRI member Ronald Reddy says the convention will also help members network to better their services. We have to lay the path ourselves and that's where the HR practitioners are coming in. Respective speakers are coming in from the industries, uh, from the respective job professions and giving us directions. When I say us, I mean not just the HR practitioners, but employers across Fiji and it's, it's going to help us to move forward. HR managers are stressed that during these difficult times but continue to play an important role in the employment of the nation. Vedina Rakautonga, FBC News. The Education Ministry has launched the Pacific Regional Channel with over 800 video resources to help teachers across the country. Minister Rosie Akbar is optimistic that the video content will encourage students to take up science subjects and mathematics, which are mostly ignored. Josai Nunga has more. The Education Minister believes COVID-19 has allowed the ministry to adopt innovative learning methods. This channel comes at a very good time when we are rethinking uh, uh, on ways to promote STEM subjects mm -hmm. and al also to ensure that our students are well prepared for the external exams. We are a month away into our external examinations and many school students are into the final stages of preparation. Agbar says this learning tool will assist students produce better results in mathematics, which has had the lowest pass rate in recent years. I would love to think that our teachers across the country will access these materials and integrate it into the daily classrooms and uh, of course take advantage of these materials that can be used as, sup as supplementary resources. Director for the USP Center for Flexible Learning, Professor Som Naidu, says the channel is easily accessible from any computer or mobile device. The video feed from, 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 from the database can be hooked onto local television, so broadcast possibilities there and over 800 video resources in, in STEM areas, like I was saying, have been added to this platform already. Anyone who wants to access the resources simply has to do an online search using the keyword specific regional channel and the results will show up immediately. Chosa Yenunga, FBC News. Lombasa will soon boast the biggest seafood market in the country. The Ministry of Local Government plans to build a big seafood centre to replace the current temporary fish market. However, as Eleanor Tarangai View reports, the location of this new development has fish vendors worried about their sales. Lombasa supplies 80% of seafood to other parts of Fiji and the Ministry of Local Government is looking to capitalise on this by building a seafood centre. Our intention is to capture what Namasa does best and what it has been doing on this one, which is basically supplying 80% of seafood to other parts of Fiji. Also exporting seafood from here to overseas. The Lombasa Town Council has acquired a three-acre land at Nayada subdivision to build what will be the biggest seafood center in the country. And with that, we also intend to have uh, seafood restaurants, we can rent it out uh, 
as well as the SME market, small businesses that can operate on the This development has not gone down well with current fish vendors who are worried the change in location could mean losing their customers. We will find difficulties to sell the fish. The business will go down. The new location is not suitable for us as it is far from town and we'll get very little customers to come and buy from us. Minister Pramila Kumar stressed during a meeting with vendors this week that the existing fish market is temporary and is now congested. The new seafood center, she adds, will also be able to cater for a large number of vendors. The new center will be located across the Lambasa River, opposite the existing fish market. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. And turning overseas, millions of Americans are celebrating a Thanksgiving transformed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Health officials have warned people not to travel, but it may have fallen on deaf ears. And we're now join up Anissa with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up, Reserve Bank reviews economic situation. And in growing Fiji, new business park for Colombo. Stay with us. Pula, nadang gua prosa nang kerse, gua irkeraki. Do televi ono varo ngan radio Fiji One, nando mivi. Radio Fiji One, nando mivi. The Reserve Bank of Fiji has projected that 2020 would note the largest economic contraction on records at negative 19%. Governor Arif Ali says the recovery forecast next year is dependent on the reopening of borders and resumption of international travel. RBF says the slump in global travel continues to affect the tourism and related industries and partial indicators for consumption spending, investment activities and labor market conditions recorded annual contractions in the first 10 months this year. The sluggish economic activity, domestic credit, has slowed and interest rates have declined owing to high levels of liquidity, which was around 856.5 million as at Wednesday. Under the current uncertainty, economic growth for 2021 is anticipated to range between 1.6 and 8 percent, while in 2022 growth is forecast to be between 5.2 and 8.7 percent. RBF says annual inflation stayed at negative 2.99 percent in October and is forecast to be negative percent by year end. Sharon from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money market. Good evening. It was a rather quiet day for money traders with almost no catalyst to move the market. However, the Kiwi dollar was drawing bids. The New Zealand Treasury's weekly economic update highlighted a strong rebound in retail sales, a steady recovery in card spending, a drop in the number of people receiving income support, and an upward revision to the annual GDP by $7.9 billion. Meanwhile, the US dollar is broadly under pressure on month-end selling amid improving risk appetite. Riskier currencies are on the rise as traders become more optimistic about news of COVID-19 vaccines and hopes for a more stable period in U.S. politics. Across the Atlantic, the European Central Bank's October meeting has further confirmed the expected announcement of stimulus measures when the Central Bank meets in December. And that's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar rose against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Kina and the Euro. But it slipped slightly against the Chinese one, US greenback and the Japanese yen. Prices on the commodities market were mixed. Oil prices declined to just over $45 a barrel. Gold rose to $1,809 per ounce and silver closed down at $23.25 per ounce. The Lindhurst group of companies will construct a state-of-the-art business park development in the Colombo tax-free zone. The exclusive local manufacturer of popular international brand Kukai has signed an agreement with the Australian government-funded market development facility to bless the support for the project. The multi-million dollar venture will offer new factory spaces capable of facilitating 15,000 people, state-of-the-art information and communication technology and support services, including a supermarket and a serviced apartments. 
Fiji's bureau business process, rather, outsourcing industry currently employs around 3,000 people and the business park will grow the sector to provide 10,000 local jobs. Group Chief Executive Rocco Seru Nambalarua says they see huge potential. Post-COVID-19 as Australia and New Zealand are likely to, to, re to relook at their outsourcing strategies. Construction is expected to begin next year. That's all from Business Tonight. Jamie joins us now with the latest from sports. And good evening in sports tonight. Four champion teams in Fiji Fact semi-final. And Nandi celebrate fair brother victory. This and more coming up. Four champion teams have made the Vodafone Fiji Fact knockout stage. Defending champion Nandi, BOG winners Rewa, IDC title holders Lambasa and VPL champ Suva will feature in the semi-finals of the last tournament of the season tomorrow at Subrail Park. Despite the impressive win against Mba last night, host Lombasa believes they have a bigger mountain to climb against Suva. Tali Materakula has more. The Mbamba Singh Alliance were after a win last night and they did it in style with an impressive 3-1 victory over Mba. Both teams have prepared. It is the team that is more hungry that will win. And uh, we knew if we were going to have a bad result in this, we will uh, disappoint our home fans. So I think some boys played for the fans today. And they really gave their heart out. A uh, lot of pressure, a lot of pressure inside the field. Boys uh, took a lot of pressure, but uh, the positive thing was they managed it and uh, the result is there. Team captain Aquila Matei Suva says they've made the semi final, but a quality side awaits them tomorrow. Uh, Suva is a good team, um, good place. They have a good place. Uh, they recently won the, the league, and I think uh, that's uh, a good challenge again for us. Uh, Maybe another step up, another level up from this game. I believe uh, the boys will do wonders during uh, the semi final against Suva. And, uh, not pro promising anything, but we'll give him a best shot. Lambasa may be beaming with confidence after the win, but Suva has some challenges with key players like Benny Amino Matenangara and Christopher Wasasala injured. You know, they've been playing uh, some wonderful soccer in these uh, conditions they have in uh, Lambasa. They adapted, uh, adapted very fast in. Uh, and they played uh, a lot of with a lot of speed, you know. Uh. Lambasa will host Suva at 5 p.m. tomorrow in the second semi-final. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. In the first semi-final, Nandi will take on Rewa. While the Jet Setters are working hard to counter Rewa's solid structure, the Delta Tigers' mentor isn't demanding much from his group of players. Karlani Tavi with the details. The ground conditions may not be up to standard, but Rewa had to adapt quickly over the last two days, and they'll have to do the same against Nandi tomorrow. Whatever we achieve now, from now on, it's just the, uh, the cream on the, on, the, on the cake. So we have enjoyed it. I think I cannot demand more from the boys, but the boys are trying their best uh, uh, to give their best in this condition. Nandi, on the other hand, will have a different approach to the game. Head coach Kamal Swami says they'll have a video session tonight because Rewa is a structured side. One of the best technical side and uh, Marika Rondo is doing very good with them. And uh, they are using their bench very well. And uh, we, we need to come out with a good plan so that we can counter them. And that's what we are going to rectify today in our sessions. The defending champions will meet Rawa in the first semi-finals at 3 p.m. tomorrow at Subrail Park in Lambasa. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Nandi rugby fans gathered in large numbers in Nandi town today to celebrate their fair brother trophy win. The streets were a sea of blue as people marched through town celebrating the team's performance. Executive member Jeff Tamata says it was a double celebration for the union as the team received cash rewards totaling about 22,000 that was shared uh, by the players and the management team today. We are so grateful. Uh, this is something that we always dream. 
about uh, ever since uh, that we started this new new strategic plan for Nendi. We always want to reward the players. I'm so grateful that we can accomplish that today. As you have seen, a uh, historic moment uh, indeed. More than 40 men's teams have been registered for the three-day Fiji Beta Wairiki Sevens that starts next Thursday. For the first time, the games will be enclosed and uh, spectators will have to pay an entry fee. Caroline Itavi with the details. The difference this year is that spectators will have to buy a ticket. The new thing that introduced this year is um, we are enclosing the ground. So it's going to charge fees to the spectators. So that's new. And, uh, and, and the number of teams have increased this year. Uh, it's gone up to 40 seniors and 32 under 20, 21. And uh, a lot more big teams are traveling down to Tavini this year. Paradise Beverages National Sales Manager Pauline Vuki says Taveuni rugby players will get the much needed exposure to develop their skills. And also we know that we are giving back to the community as a whole. Eh? Um, the Wairiki, uh, Fiji Bita Wairiki Sevens uh, tournament will play a big part for not only for the company but also for the community of uh, Tabeuni and to the young grassroots players that we actually want them to build and become somebody later on in the future. The people of Tabeuni can expect exciting rugby next Thursday through Saturday at Wairiki Grounds. Carlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Going into its ninth round of competition, the Suva Touch Rugby Association has been overwhelmed with the large turnout of teams and supporters. Association Vice President Sabinada Bodea says they've completed 165 games with 45 yet to be played. He adds the current numbers and increased interest shows a lot of promise for the future of the sport in the country. Uh, it's, been, it's been really nice, uh, very humbling. Um, a lot of support coming up from all our affiliate clubs. Uh, so, really looking forward to what holds for 2021. Athletics Fiji officials are impressed with the performance of some secondary school students taking part in its weekly competitions. National coach Mbola Tafo says uh, with the Coca-Cola Games to be held next year, some athletes are delivering promising results. He says this is a good indication leading up to the Fiji finals. Especially for secondary school students, Coke is another six months away. I uh, was surprised with the times uh, some secondary school students are running. They are training, so it's a good sign. In play of the day, this goal by Lautoka defender Colinio Sivoki was one of the picks of day three of the Vodafone Fiji fact yesterday. And while Lautoka was eliminated despite winning 2-1, Sivoki's goal will surely be amongst the best scored at the tournament. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in uh, new media, high-tech cameras catching drivers on mobile phones. Find out where after the break. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkat. media tonight, Dutch police have begun testing a camera and software system capable of identifying when a motorist is driving with a mobile phone in their hand. This is part of efforts to reduce traffic accidents. And whether it was a cloudy day with scattered showers across most of Fiji, a quick look at the weather map in the west. Cloudy skies and light drizzle arrived early in the day, but still not enough rain to make much of a difference to the dry conditions. Eastwards from Pacific Harbor to Suva, more of the same, but with some heavier showers. And there's still a chance of isolated thunderstorms. And up north, there were cloudy skies and light scattered showers. At sea, northeasterly winds of 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 7 minutes after midnight, followed by high tide at 6.11 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.20.
Now for tomorrow, it will bring occasional showers and the chance of thunderstorms to most of Vanua Levu, while Viti Levu will see clearing conditions with some rain along eastern shores and fair weather in the west. Further outlook, we're looking further on to Sunday. Showers in the north and a mixture of cloud and showers over eastern Viti Levu and fine in the west. And in Fijian Pulse, we asked, what do you think of the quality of football displayed at the Fiji Fact? Yeah, the ground condition is very bad, but uh, the, the, the team also should be managed, all the players also should manage to play the, like that kind of ground. Yes, it is kind of dropped because the field is very bad. Eh? The players can injure their legs and stuff, falling and everything. Eh? The ground condition is really bad in Lambasa. They should have uh, stopped the game and the officials and the management board should have uh, checked the ground, assessed the ground first. You see the ground condition, it's no good and if we just allow to play the game, it shouldn't be like that. Eh? As you say, an example, that a summer islander, he broke his arm. See? Recapping the main stories for tonight, Viliaminga Walker is new Sidalpa leader. Facebook commentator remanded in custody and Kunawave sentenced to life imprisonment for baby's death. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should there be criminal charges on teachers using corporal punishment? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to today's shot of the day, last one for the week, absolutely gorgeous one, health conscious Fijians enjoying a day in the sun at Alba Park in Suva. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, by Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Marsami Naika, Bumbo Lugu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 Me, Purana Gana Lage, Ame Bota Chalage. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan.